This is Ben Summer. I own and operate BandsLikeRush.com, a music discovery podcast and blog featuring up-and-coming progressive rock bands. Enjoy this video edition of the podcast, and check out my own music. Uh, visit my website at bensummer.com. If you sign up for the email list, you'll get three free downloads. This is Ben Summer at BandsLikeRush.com, also at BenSummer.com. This week I interview three members of the Philadelphia-based prog band, The Tea Club, and we discuss their new album release, Rabbit. I'm here with three uh, members of the band, uh, the Tea Club. They're a relatively new, but not so new, uh, prog band. Um, and I'll just go around the uh, the circle here. I have Dan McGowan, who who is guitar and vocalist, guitarist and vocalist. Becky Adenanko, who plays keyboards, and Pat McGowan, who's also a, a guitarist and vocalist. Uh, you guys are siblings, I gather, correct? Yes. Cool. Got it. So, uh, Dan, why don't you just tell me a little bit about the band, where you're, uh, how you came to where you are now, and uh, anything, uh, you know, I hear you have an album release, anything exciting that's happening right now. Yes, yes. Um, well, the band formed in 2003, so that's, what, seven years now? Yeah, yeah seven, seven years. years they've been around. But uh, we didn't record our first album until 2008, and we just released our second album earlier this month which is called Rabbit. Um, and we have uh, a bit of a new lineup now. Um, Becky played bass on the album, but now she's playing keyboards. And we have a new drummer whose name is Joe and um, a new bassist and a new guitarist. They couldn't be here tonight. Uh, our new bassist, unfortunately, has <laughs> some kind of a horrible toothache. Aww. Uh Sounded pretty bad. I think oral surgery is going to occur at some point, so <laughs> the poor guy. Um, but yeah, the uh, the new album, Rabbit, we're really trying to push, and we're really proud of it. It has um, Tom Brislin played keyboards on it, um, and Tom has played with you know some pretty big frog bands like Yes and, and Renaissance, so we were really excited to have him on there. Um, How did that go? How did that come about? Um, well, we we met Tom through uh, Brett Cole from Echoin, which uh, we, we got in touch with Echoin um, when we released our first album because we got a lot of comparisons to Echoin, um, but we had never really li listened to them. Uh, and then we took a listen, and we were like, oh, yeah, these, these guys are really good. So we wound up contacting them and kind of becoming friends. And uh, we mentioned to Brett that... Uh, we were recording our second album and that we were thinking about having keyboards on it. And he suggested Tom because Brett and Tom had played in some bands together uh, before that. Oh, cool. So, yeah. yeah so uh, what, what was uh, Becky, what were you doing? Uh, if this guy was playing keyboards on the album, were you just backing him up or were you still on bass at the time? Um, I was playing bass on the album and then, we decided that we definitely needed to feature the keyboards in the band, so 
I switched up since I'm also better at keyboards than bass. So. <laughs> Perfect. So you've got a big, you guys, uh, your lineup is pretty big. Did, did I count three guitars in there for, yeah. for first of all? <laughs> yeah, guitars. So why, why the, uh, why the orgy of guitars, if you will? Um, well, for one, uh, it's just right now the band is, is a lot of friends. It's basically our closest friends all together. Um, and Jim, the third guitarist, uh, guitar is his best instrument. And we were just like, you know what, let's, Let's try it. And it kind of freed uh, me and Pat up a little bit to sing more as opposed to have to concentrate on singing and playing the guitar at the same time. Um, but it's going to become a, a huge, you know, we'll see what happens once we start writing new material because it's going to be a lot of guitar. But I'll, I'm excited for it. Well, it's not so, If you now that I, as you were talking, I was thinking uh, that's a lot of people to have on stage. But when I think about it, Pretty pretty much oh, any yeah. any recorded product these days layers on the guitars like plywood, so uh, it's sure. probably a good thing to be able to reproduce at least some of that uh, layering live when you guys play as a band. Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, it's it gives us a little more of a safety net, I think, having so many people in the band playing, and oh, it is it is uh, some of, a lot of the stages that we play are way too small for six people. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> but, and especially considering Jim is like a pretty a pretty huge guy, he's like six foot four, you know. I mean, he's, he's, he's trim though. He's trim. He is a trim guy. Yeah, tall, oh, very 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 tall. <laughs> Doesn't really make sense, but you know. I'm curious who who sang vocals on this. Uh, you have a MySpace page. The first track up there is this song called Simon Magus. I don't know if that's yeah, Bible. Simon is it a Bible reference or something? I'm not sure, but. Uh... It's deep. Yeah, it's well, Pat. Why don't you go for this one? Well, Simon Magus is um, was a, a real Gnostic teacher back in the uh, first and second century, the end of the first century and into the second century AD. And uh, he does make an appearance in the Book of Acts, uh, the eighth and ninth chapter of the Book of Acts. He has an encounter with uh, Peter the Apostle, um, and uh, he 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 was a real person, um, and he was a real religious figure at the time. Um, he kind of came in, uh, came into uh, odds with the emerging Christian church um, as a Gnostic teacher. In the Bible, he uh, kind of gets slapped down by Peter, who kind of slaps him down. Um, but there are other accounts of uh, a duel between Peter and a Simon, smackdown, if you will. A smackdown, a yeah, religious oh. smackdown. <laughs> um, and we, uh, the... Uh, we were just fascinated by the by the character, and we um, we kind of give uh, a couple different accounts uh, throughout the song. The lyrics are um, they kind of uh, jump from one perspective to the next. Uh, there is the biblical account is in there as well. Um, there was a Gnostic text that was called the Revelation of Peter, uh, in in which Simon and Peter have their religious smackdown. Yeah. Um, we uh, we included some of the lyrics in that as well. Um, it was just a big kind of a nerdy uh, lyrical content um, as far as uh, revealing um, the kind of corny, nerdy book that we all read when we're not writing music. <laughs> you mean the Bible or the uh, the heretical alternatives? Just a little, I guess a little bit of, a, of of all of it. Yeah. Cool. No, I was definitely I wouldn't call it nerdy. It's nerdy in the nicest sense, but yeah, that's pretty. That's a pretty ambitious topic, and uh, and the attempt to include not just your own text, but then uh, to set text from history. I mean, that's downright, uh, I don't know, almost uh, old old school. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, there's there's enough songs about uh, about girls and drugs, so we decided we would try maybe something else, obscure biblical break. <laughs> yeah, break open the Bible and start bothering people with that. <laughs> Let's listen to a track from the band's last album, uh, General Winter's Secret Museum. This one is called Big Al. Mm-hmm. 